Okay, it's 5.30. I will call the public works meeting to order. Start with roll call. Alderperson Heidemann. Here. Alderperson Rust. Present. Alderperson Rainey. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. Okay, and Alderperson Decker is here. So we will start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Okay, I think we can skip introductions. I think everybody is familiar with everyone. So we'll go right on to approval of minutes from May 24th, 23rd, 2023. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Okay. Item number six, general ordinance number 4-2324, June 5th, 2023, an ordinance amending section 8-16 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code related to allowing pets in parks and public grounds. Right there. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have representatives from our Parks and Forestry Division, Superintendent Mr. Joel Curlin, Tim Bolt, Supervisor of the Parks and Forestry Division, as well as the mayor is joining us this evening. Uh, and this is a result of, I believe, the Pet Friendly Task Force. So with that introduction, I'd like to turn it over to Joe and, and uh, have you give him a little bit more background. Mayor, do you mind if I give a little background first? Do you yeah. Want to? Nope. Okay. So this, this goes back a while. So we've been doing the Pet, pet Friendly, um, we've had a Pet Friendly Volunteer Board since, I believe, 2020. Um, it was an initiative, for our mayor's initiative, actually. And... Um, through a community-wide survey and the work of the volunteers, um, we found a, we got a lot of received a lot of good information that people really want to do be able to do go more places with their dogs, pets, uh, to make it more community friendly. And um, through the work that we've done, I'll just note that we are the first Wisconsin city that city that has received uh, that certificate of being a pet friendly um, city. So. Um, a lot of work has gone into this, a lot of, of, of time and effort by volunteers, the mayor, um, the past mayor, myself, um, um, and, and uh, the police department. So they've been a, a representative of this committee also. So, so this is really the first big thing that we've done. Um, oh, we, we, we did a taste of it uh, end of the last year, throwing out, hey, th these are the things we really want to do. Uh, since then, we've gone out to uh, several of the neighborhoods. Um, we could tell things back a little bit right now. And um, so just to run through brief things briefly. And I did make copies. We had a red line version of the ordinance. Um, it was not showing up um, on the on, on Munis, the, the meetings, but Heather did fix that. So you should be able to go and see the actual uh, changes that have been made, that been, has been helping. Uh, the mayor and myself so those are on there now i do have a hard copy if anybody wants one uh, that i haven't ready tonight but um so we did visit um king park uh, neighborhood indian indiana corridor and even though memorial neighborhood is not an official neighborhood they've been meeting so we've met with them actually twice i uh, read in king park uh, that's cleveland and yes that's a cleveland park area yeah yep so um, like I said, the red line um, is up, and I do have a hard copy now, but it's changes that we're asking for fairly simple. Um, there's some smaller things as you look through the red line version, um, but um, under um, Section 816B, Somehow we missed the, 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 the 18th Street South Side Dog Park has not been in our ordinance as an off-leash area. So that was included to clean that up. And then the new location over by the city offices um, on 9th Street, that is in there as a new off-leash location. So there's other stuff that goes through here, but the, the big things are um, allowing parks, uh, allowing pets on leash at Evergreen Park. Uh, JC um, Quarry Park, excluding the Quarry Beach. Uh, JC Park from um, to Mill Road uh, along the Pigeon River Corridor. Uh, Moose Park would be an off-leash 
area eventually with a fenced in area and an on leash in the park. Cool. Uh, if you're going to do a, it made sense. If you're going to do an off leash area, you're going to then have to allow on leash to, yeah. to use it. Moose Park, Cleveland Park, and then um, we're going to clean up uh, the wordage for Area 8. Same thing at Area 8 Kiwanis. Right now, that only con coincides with the, the, the beer garden. So we're just Area 8, that portion of the park would be just like the rest of the open. We'd eventually have a fenced in area. Uh, one thing we, I wanted to throw in there too that we've talked about for a few years is um, item M under that would be allowing, we've had requests for events um, for, for pets, um, like pet fundraisers, things like that. And for David to be able, his position to be able to approve that without going through a whole ordinance change. So um, that's, that's in there also. So any questions? Any questions, any comments, any, so we'll make just a couple of comments. I, I, I'm really excited about this thing. We had the Indiana Corridor and the Neighborhood Association and the, the um, was per, per, fairly positive from everyone from the neighborhood. They were real excited about having this. They were really looking forward to having the off-leash area. Um, about, you know, with the timing of that, when that happens exactly, and it's a funds thing where we can get the fencing. When that happens, I mean, they're, they're looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a positive. Um, I mean, there, there are negatives always with any of these things. I mean, the biggest concern people have is, is uh, you know, the, the, the cleanup, you know, people not being responsible. But I think people aren't responsible along the way anywhere. I think this this gives the uh, gives gives the citizens a place to be able to walk their dogs. You know, responsibly and, and to show us that this is going to work. I think this is a good way to do it so that it's, it's not every park, it's just certain parks. And I think it'll, it'll, it'll be a positive start for, for us to bring to move forward and, and kind of prove itself a little bit. You know, this, this is a good proving grounds to, to see how it goes without going to every park. And uh, I, think, I think this is a big uh, major positive for us. Angela. Um, I have a, a couple questions. Um, in section F, I see the red line was waste bags was taken off. So we are providing receptacles, but we're not going to do, we're not going to provide bags. Yeah, we felt that that was pretty strong of us to say we're going to provide bags all the time. Yeah. You know, we, we have garbages all through the parks and, and we're going to provide some um, definitely in the areas of the enclosed fence and, and some more in other areas uh, just so there's um, plenty for people to able to use but what if you know we just felt there's not really possible to provide provide the, the, the bags everywhere no so you know? it, they are provided in the in the off-leash areas is that what you're saying yes that's the plan yeah. is to provide them in the off-leash area and, and i think too we're, we're looking at i think this I think the 18th street one has it where it's just like a communal refill yeah so that sort of uh, strategy is that's great. Kind of us it. providing it yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone can yeah. Everyone's got a thousand of those things. Yeah. Um, and then the other question slash comment, I guess, is uh, hopefully there's plans for uh, like a frequently asked question thing on the website and all of yeah. that stuff. Already working can... on it. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. It's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. I think one of the I think one of the reasons I think you talked about it too is, is if it says it in there that we will provide them, then if we don't provide them, then they can say, well. You said you were going to provide them, and I didn't. And I don't. They're not there, so it's not. I'm not responsible for cleaning up. This way, it kind of keeps us off. Keeps that from happening, also. So, any other comments? Joel, thank you, Chairman. I, I think this is a big step for the city of Sheboygan, and I want to see this go through and be very positive, and the citizens get an opportunity that have the pets that didn't have an opportunity to walk their pet in a park. They get to you to do that, and that's fantastic. I guess my concern, if I have any, is how the signage is going to be put up and what size signage is going to be put up and where the signage is going to be put so that people understand where they can have their dog and where they can't. Okay, there's nothing in here about what size the sign is going to be. Is there going to be, are we going to be able to say, hey, okay, who decides what sign the sign is? Because I know for a fact over on Lakeshore Drive, we had a sign there for a year that was 
speed it. No, couldn't even read it. They're walking the dogs right past the sign. So that's not what I want to see. I want to, and I also want to know where the police are on as far as regulating to make sure that all this stays fair for everybody. Um, uh, is this going to be um, referred to law licensing at all or not? Your plan is not for it to go there, it's to go to council after this. Council, council, council aside. Okay. But representatives of the police department were involved in the brainstorming of this mm -hmm. and on the task force. And so my expectation is that they're providing input on enforcement and concerns from their, their perspective. And um, Tyson Pitch, who's the sign shop leadman, has been at a few of the meetings too. And we're designing the signs um, in a way that it is visible and it pops and making sure we're utilizing you know, a lot of the, the flashy colors. So like we'll have designated areas that will be red and that that, that pop out and hopefully don't fade and uh that's a no dogs in this area or there'll be green dogs on leash in this area that kind of provides more um uh, succinct messaging visually and with the signs and then having the ordinance on there that says no dogs in this part per ordinance blah 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 or yes <clears throat> dogs on leash in this part per ordinance blah 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 so the pd has been very helpful in providing uh insight in terms of the signage on that as well too and I believe that's important for both the dog owner and the citizen that goes, hey, what's happening here? When did this change? Because you know there are going to be people who hey, call you up and say, I got a guy running around with his dog, and he doesn't realize that that park is open. And I think the placement of the er the areas is a, are wise choices. Okay, so I, I, I think basically I think you've covered a pretty good portion of Sheboygan already, and it and I think it has room for growth. Well, then. It's got to be maintained, and people have to understand. You got to clean up after your pet. Yeah. I, I hope it works out. That's the nice thing about working with this committee. I mean, um, they they, they want to educate. They want to have a good website. They want to. They, they're helping with the signs, the design, and, and placements. Um, but it's just not the city saying, "Well, this 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 is where this should go." It's people actually put their dogs, knowing locations and. So we're getting a lot of input from them um, and, and just trying to make some creative ones also. So that's that's the nice thing about having a committee really work and passionate about this to, to work with us. You know, I guess never, I guess it, it, with Moose Park, it's an underutilized park. It's a, it's a nice park. It's, it, it's an, it's, it is a nice park, but it is underutilized. And it's, you know, so for this to be something unique, for that park to be able to have it, I think is, is a great, you know, is a great asset to our neighborhood, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So, good so, Big term. Uh, the fine of one hundred twenty-five dollars. Where does that money go to? Does that just go into the general coffer, or? Yes, I've got it all. Yeah. Pardon me. I said it's real because I've got it all. Forfeitures go into the general the fund. Okay. Yeah, but we don't receive the full amount of a forfeiture. We receive a percentage of it. Percentage percentage goes to the state. Um, mm other initiatives imposed by the legislature. Yeah. All right, anyone else at oh, that? Um, for the section N, where it says, you know, with Dave's approval for you can have events and stuff, so have you talked like with the Humane Society for like adoption events and stuff like that? Is that the idea kind of for it? That's actually where this yeah. whole thing came from. Was when they were doing their fundraising, yeah, we would have loved to have been able to have a, a an event for them. Sure. Um, just it just wasn't very we're unable to do it with the current ordinance. Sure. All right. The, the other piece is now this committee can also do something to like encourage. You know, what if we need to buy new receptacles or right. maybe we have a dog drinking station or something right. at these places. Now Stay there's tuned. opportunity for that. that that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think just a few other points I want to spitball out too. We got a, a grant from the Pet Friendly Certification City too. Um, so we're utilizing that for signage and poop, poop stations. Um, well, let's see. The official term. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so it's been uh, easy to use some of those funds too for some of these projects. Um, but they're just uh, some of the notoriety that we've gotten for working on this from the city. Um, um, Visit Sheboygan has been a good partner with this uh, as well. And by just mentioning it to some of the travel writers about some of the pet friendly initiatives, we got some good notoriety online for pet 
focus of tourism. So um, it's actually been very interesting, kind of uh, some of the, um, uh, the, the spin off benefits of doing some of this stuff as well, too. So, yeah. And then actually meeting with some developers, uh, even with the, the downtown dog park, there were some developers that were very impressed with um, the walkability aspect and having it really close right downtown. So it was just those little, um, you know, it's like the cherry on top that just kind of elevates us a lot of our story too. And, you know, to, to Dean's point and some of the conversations we had at some of the neighborhood meetings, you know, a lot of folks are excited that, oh, now we can just walk two, three blocks instead of getting in the car, driving, you know, all the way to the south side. So, yeah, in the winter, that's rough. Yeah. I thought it would mess to bring him back in the car. Yeah. So, yeah. Just a few, few other bullet points. Any other comments? Comments? Okay, I guess I'm looking for a motion then. I need to approve the ordinance. Second. Motion made second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. And second to council. All right, uh, number seven, general, general ordinance number 6-2324, June 5th, 2023, ordinance repealing portions of section 21 of subs of general ordinance number 28-1415 relating to certain parking restrictions on the east side of the 2200 block of North 5th Street and the 400 block of Euclid Avenue. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. Um, this the map here. You see Euclid and Fifth Street, the white building. That's currently the the Million Dreams facility, which uh, I believe they purchased a year or two ago. Prior to that, it was uh, the Christian High School's uh, their grade school. I believe like from kindergarten to sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And because it was a school, like all schools have, there was tons of uh, no parking on school days, seven a.m. to four p.m. Well, obviously. There's no longer a school there, so the Million Dreams they 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 want as much they want to have as much on street parking as they can they can possibly have for drop off and pick up and stuff like that. So they're just asking us to eliminate the the old the old school parking that, that was there. But I asked the million dollar question because we went through a lot with the neighbors in that neighborhood. Uh, are they are, are the rest of the neighbors in that neighborhood okay with the businesses? <laughs> well, some of the neighbors moved. Uh, okay, <laughs> because the. the they, they were unhappy with the million dreams. But all the all the all the, all the parking that's being eliminated is is not on both sides of the street, like on Euclid. It's on the million on dream the side. Dream yeah. side. Okay. And I, I've been by there yeah. enough. It does not get parked heavy. Yeah. I just think yeah. that it's like the yeah. idea of being able to drop yeah. off and pick up because around all schools it's usually pretty restrictive. Yeah. This will just loosen it up, which it, it makes makes sense. Okay. Anyone else have questions? Okay. Looking for a motion then. I move to approve the ordinance. I'll second. Made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Okay, number eight, general ordinance 7 2324, June 5th, 2023. An ordinance repealing section 11 of subs of general ordinance 28. 28 14 15 general ordinance 250304 relating to parking restrictions on the north side of the 1600 block of illinois Avenue. okay same pretty much the same situation that's the emmanuel lutheran church located up at 17th and illinois on the north side of the street again they used to have a grade school there from kindergarten to sixth seventh eighth grade and they they no longer have the, have the grade school located in their facility so Again, they're asking to have the school uh, parking school days Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. removed because it's, it's just there's no need for it anymore. It's the same situation as the other one. <clears throat> Questions, discussions? Move to approve. Okay. Second. Who's made the second? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Number nine, resolution number 1823. 24 June 2023, resolution authorizing the Director of Public Works to take necessary actions to receive a grant from the Alliance Energy and a grant for from restoration of our trees, Sheboygan, for the purchase and planting of municipal trees and authorizing an adjustment to the 2023 budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to defer to, again, our Parks and Forestry Division, okay. Joe Curlin and Tim Bolt, our city forester, who's okay. been real active in this area, working with Alliant getting grants, helping us get money for trees and helping our forest. So with that, you guys wanna give a little background? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let Tim work. He, he did all the work uh, to, to get these grants for Yep. Yeah, we um, we have two grants here. So first one is specifically from directly from Alliant, and it's um, they're partnered with uh, what is it, Trees, um, Trees for Tomorrow or something like that. They the Ballrath Park. They're doing the water utility is doing that work. They're um, expanding it, and part of that we had to remove about 50 trees in that uh, was called the old Buffalo Pit, and, and they're filling that in. It's been filled in with with some of the the dirt from the construction. Anyway, some of those trees had to be removed, so I applied for this grant to try to cover the cost of replacing those 50 trees. So we received it, and that's what that $5,000, the, the cost of the 50 trees was like $400 more than that, so it was it covered pretty much all of it. And then the other grant is from Roots, which is restoration of our trees, Sheboygan. They've been, they kind of partnered with the Lion as well as part of the same um, Alliant has this uh, a goal to plant a million trees in, in their um, service areas. So they, they partner with various uh, people or, or, you know, nonprofits. So Roots is one of them, and, and they came in to help us out. We have 400 trees right now in our holding area, our gravel bed in the backyard here, which we'll be planting this fall. So they were willing to pay for half of those, which was the 18,487. So uh, together that's 23,000 and change. And uh, so that's what's what's going on, which really helps out, uh, covers the cost of, of some of those trees. This is great, great news. I mean, we were, we're trying to catch up on the, on the sill from the Emerald Ash Borer. I think we're, we're it's gonna be, I, don't, I think we'll be catching up for quite a long time yet. Yeah, but any any extra money that we can get for this is, I think, a, I think we're a positive. Any other discussion? Anything else? Uh, okay. Just looking for a motion then. I move to approve the resolution. A second. Made second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Next meeting date is June 27th, 2023. So we have exhausted the agenda. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye, we are adjourned. It just says that.